Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah wa hadu I bear witness there is no God but the one God, and he has no partners. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Assalamualaikum, everybody. Uh, so first we have an announcement. This Sunday, 2 p.m., charity. Get some soul growth, inshallah. Okay. Okay, so this is my first sermon, and I wanted to talk about something that, like, changed my view, I guess, on submission. And... Um, Talking with like traditional Muslims or other people about like submission can be pretty difficult, um, especially with traditional Muslims because you know we're very similar but we're also very very different. Um, we have a lot of things that we need to debate uh, that we debate about and like things that we disagree on, and sometimes it's impossible to change their minds. But I knew so little about like traditional Islam and like traditional Muslims and like us. I knew so little. The only things that I knew was like, okay, hadith is wrong. Like, but like, why is it wrong? And I knew, you know, they mentioned Muhammad in root prayer. I and mean, like, it's wrong, but like, why is it wrong? I mean, I knew that, but you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know the specifics of, of things. I just knew we're different and like, that's it. Um, so I have a, I had a friend. No, I still have a friend. We're still friends. <laughs> I think, uh, who knows? Um, I had a friend in high school, half, sorry. And, um, I debated with him a lot, and we're still really good friends. Uh, he's traditional Islam. I'm not sure if he's Shia or uh, Sunni. But um, we always had debates like throughout the whole school year. Like We were great friends. We'd talk about other things. But we had a lot of debates. And debating with him, I kind of realized that, you know, that's when I said, like, I realized that I actually don't know much about it. And so with debating with traditional Muslims, you have to study this. You have to understand it. And so that's exactly uh, what I did. Um, so, like during my debate, during my debates, I asked him, you know, uh, to, you know, send me videos, you know, tell me what it is that you guys follow and stuff like that. And um, something that I realized when debating with him is that he relied so heavily on hadith rather than the Quran itself. And honestly, I was like, that was the first time I saw that. Like, I, I didn't know that they relied so heavily on hadith rather than the Quran. And so I guess the question is, is why, do they, why do they do that? Why is someone who is supposed to be completely devoted to God alone, why do they devote their, uh, and get all their information and sources from man-made hadith rather than the Quran, which is literally authored uh, by God? So um, I had that question, and I asked him that question, and I got denial. That's like all I got. He, he just said like, oh, no, I don't do this. I, I refer to the Quran. I show like information within the Quran, and he was saying all this, but actions speak louder than words. And so I wanted to understand hadith. So what I did is I asked him to uh, send me a like, because because looking at online, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to, because there's so much information. There's so many different ways to I guess validate hadith or what they say. And so I asked him, you know, just send me a simple, send me a simple YouTube video of uh, a Muslim talking about how they validate hadith. And so after I asked him, he sent me the video. I'm not going to show it, but he sent me the video, and this is uh, basically what I learned. So there's this process called the continuity of the chain of transmission. Yeah, don't trust this. Okay. Uh, and the process literally reminds me of the game Telephone. You know the game, you know. We'll start with Payam. He'll whisper something to him, whisper something to him, whisper something to him, and it keep going around until you get to someone like super far down there. And um, then basically the whole humor of the game is that when it's whispered, passed to each person, uh, it completely just destroys like what was originally said, which he thought of a sentence and he passed it on. And by the, we get to, by the time we get to the end person, he says it out loud and you know, we laugh like, oh, that's not what he said, ha ha. And so um, this is literally hadith. This is, this is literally hadith. Um, they validate it by passing uh, uh, a made up law, like what we'll take, We'll take gold, for example. You can't wear gold. Guys can't wear gold or silk. We'll take that. And uh, what they'll do is back in Muhammad's time after the Quran was revealed, they'll pass it to one person. Uh, and they have to be you know, trusted or background checked people. I don't know how they're supposed to do that back in like 620 AD. Um, but they'd pass it to one person. And then that pass, pass it on to the other person all the way until Hadith was actually created into like a book. Finally, they put it on paper now. And um, this was two centuries after the Quran was actually uh, was finished. So 
this is two centuries. Nothing, nothing, just the Quran was finished, and then a whole two centuries later, uh, they made hadith, uh, which is, you know, Muhammad said this, bro, trust me, like he did. And anything could have happened within, the, within those years, even from, even from when hadith was written, so even after it was written, till now, that's 1,382 years of possible distortion changes. Maybe a hadith got lost in like a, I don't know, a fire or something, I don't know. And uh, they say that we have to trust this and follow it as Muhammad's teachings. So, first of all, we have to be sure when it comes to information. God says in the Quran to verify. How are we possibly supposed to verify something that happened like thousands and thousands of years ago? Um, and there's a verse in the Quran that says, uh, it's 31.6, among the people there are those who uphold baseless hadith and thus divert others from the path of God without knowledge and taken in vain. These have incurred a shame of retribution. Uh, 7.185, oh, did I? Uh, I guess I didn't put these on the slides, my bad. Um, 7.185, have they not looked at the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all the things God has created? Does it occur to them that the end of the life may be near? Which hadith besides this do they believe in? Okay. So here's some a few hadiths. First of all, uh, you can't wear gold and silk. Uh, apparently, he said, oh, where is it? These two, he apparently held gold in his left hand and uh, silk in his right hand and said, these two are haram for males among my fathers. What? Like, <laughs> he said this and there's proof of this? No, there's not. Uh, you cannot shave your beard. It is haram to shave your beard because of the general application of text and forbidden resemblance that is believers prophet Muhammad. He said, okay, here we go, this is what I was looking for. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, I don't know, they say, peace be upon him, I'll get into that later. Uh, they said, trim your mustache and let your beards grow. Apparently he said this. One sentence and 1,382 years later, uh, we still have proof that he said this. Um, so, they just, they take these hadiths and they just follow it mindlessly with no proof. Um, not only, remember my friend Isa, he said that, oh no, I do take this, I, do t I only take their information from the Quran, I don't follow hadith. I don't, no, he said, I do take information from the Quran and the Quran is the all you, that you need. He said this, yet nowhere in the Quran does it say any of these things. Oh, I forgot to mention this one. Uh, women can't pray or fast during their menstrual cycle. That's like what? I don't know, you guys tell me, like two weeks, three weeks of, of absolutely no praying? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, there's no proof of it, right? There's, this is not in the Quran, this is, this is just absolutely made up. Um, and God says in 1678, he gave us the hearing, the eyes, and the brain that we must use it, right? That's just a section of the verse. I didn't get the whole verse. But he literally says we have to use our brains, right? These uh, traditional Muslims, they follow these scholars uh, and they put their complete trust and religion in the hands of them and says, whatever you say, you know, I'll follow you because apparently, because you've studied this all your life, right? So you must know. Um, and they just, they literally like, they're putting all their trust in them. All their, their faith, it's literally like their faith. That should be um, something that you have to be sure about. Um, okay, so. Okay, here we go. Hadith and Sunnah, fabrications by the prophet's enemies. 6, 112, we have permitted the enemies of every prophet, human and jinn devils, and to inspire in each other fancy words in order to deceive. Have your Lord willed, they would have not done it. You shall disregard them and their fabrications. The verse, the Quran is literally saying, stop following a, a baseless hadith and stop listening to random people that are just trying to deceive you and like their random, uh, their fabrications. Okay, now I said earlier uh, that traditional Muslims, they don't even read the Quran. And in the verse 31.6, 7.185, it says that, you know, baseless hadith, you shouldn't follow that, and that what other uh, hadith besides this do you believe in? Um, but even if they do read this, and I've been told this, that the word, 
and make sure I'm on the right track, is that the word uh, hadith is actually message, uh, which goes into uh, my, other tr my other topic, which is translation. Um, when debating with Muslims, I've also realized that it's impossible to debate with them using English translations that you find like online. Because I'll tell them a piece of information and they'll go on their phone and they'll look up like, oh, the verse and the number and they'll say like, oh, this is correct or this is wrong. Um, but especially when it comes to translation, you can butcher and change the meaning of the Quran completely and you, you can make up you know, laws because of this. You can misunderstand the verse because you might not be able to do something because you misunderstood the verse or uh, something like that. Um, we're going to attempt to do this. Okay, here we go. Okay, you know what? I, I don't really need to show you. Um, but basically, um, we have the perfect translation, uh, which 31.6, among, this is not the perfect translation. Sorry, I should have, <laughs> this is the wrong translation. I'm comparing it to this. So in 31.6, among the people, there are those who uphold baseless hadith and thus divert others from the path of God without knowledge and taken in vain. They have incurred uh, shame from attribution. Now, if you scroll down, um, literally they organized it in a way where it'll say, um, okay, thank you. They'll organize it in a way where it'll literally say, oh, it was that easy? Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so we'll literally have like uh, Sahih International, I don't know what that is, Yusuf Ali. Like, there's so many different, I guess, like scholars or whatever uh, of d exact same verse being translated. Uh, being uh, translated completely differently. And there's so many like different translations. Uh, okay, how do I go back here? Top of the screen. Yeah, he explained to me this before, but I completely forgot everything. Thank you. Okay. Okay. There it is. Okay. What? Can I close it? Now I closed everything? My bad, guys. Sorry. It's all right. Mm -hmm. I have other uh, links, but I don't know if I want to click on them now. Um, okay. Whew. Okay, so when debating with traditional Muslims, uh, there's these, all these translations. You can't get the, your point across because there's so many different understandings of the, of the verse. And it's just, it's like impossible. So in the, in the verse that I just showed you, uh, this one, they read baseless hadith as uh, like a baseless message. And what my friend said was that that's t this verse is talking about if someone comes down, uh, if someone, I don't know, some random person claims to be a messenger and then like makes up a book and says that it was from God, that that's what it's talking about. And in a way, that's all that is kind of like exactly what it's talking about. But he, he only understood that as like message. He didn't think of it as hadith, right? And so when debating with um, when debating with traditional Muslims, just show them the Arabic version of the Quran. Because there are so many translations out there of English in English that are literally just super changed, but the Arabic version, and the traditional Muslims will agree with this with you, that the Arabic version is finalized and complete and isn't changed at all, and it's the perfect translation no matter what. So, uh, I didn't speak Arabic, but my friend did, so I'd literally just give him this verse, and uh, he was, he, then he tried to like explain it. He's like, no, but this is not what hadith really means. Like hadith means like, you know, a message, but then he kind of went back to his old translation. I didn't know what he was saying. Um, and another example of this uh, translation being so important is the misconception of Muhammad being illiterate. Um, 
literally translation is like the reason why they think this. Um, Muhammad wasn't illiterate, okay? There's actual proof in the Quran that even say that he wasn't illiterate, which uh, the verse, I'll get into that, the proof afterwards, but in the verse, they think, in the Zura, a verse in Zura, uh, 62.2, it's right there. Um, he is the one who sent to the Gentiles a messenger from among them to recite to them his revelations, purify them and teach them the scripture and wisdom. Before this, they had gone far astray. So um, they think Gentiles in the Arabic word, and the Arabic word means illiterate or non-spoken person, which I, I think, uh, again, so many different translations, but non-speaking persons or illiterate. Um, and this is the verse that they would use to back up their claim of Muhammad being illiterate. Um, within this Arabic word, umi, it actually means uh, Gentiles. And there's ways, to, there's also, in other, ver in other verses, there's actually proof that Gentiles means, oh, I didn't say the, the uh, Gentiles means someone without a scripture or who doesn't follow a scripture. I didn't say that. But there's actually verses in the Quran where it uses Gentiles in that context. Um, to 78, among them are Gentiles who do not know the scripture. Gentiles, again, means someone who doesn't have a, a message or doesn't follow a message. And this perfectly you know, shows that Gentiles means this. Except through hearsay, then they assume that they know it. Now, also, there's a verse in the Quran, 25.5. Um, they also said tales from the past that he wrote down, they were dictated to him day and night. There's verses talking about Muhammad, you can't dictate to an illiterate person. Um, and that's honestly just like proving itself. Okay. I'll take this time, yeah, to uh, repent, to be able to allow this repentance. Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, wa hadu la shalik Allah. I bear witness there is no God but the one God, and he has no partners. Okay. So, I'm like a slide on track. Okay. Okay. Now, I mentioned before that, um, I mentioned before about the translation, and actually, I don't think I mentioned this, but basically, uh, Rasha Khalifa's translation is perfect, right? Arabic version is perfect, and he translated it perfectly from that. Um, so when I was trying to debate with my friends, I was actually trying to show him the uh, Russia Khalifa's version, uh, but he was like, no, I'm not going to follow this. Uh, he, he thinks he's a messenger, he says, or something like that. Um, so when debating with Muslims, sorry, I don't want to go too far. When debating with Muslims, with traditional Muslims, uh, the biggest thing that they have a problem with is accepting messengership from Russia Khalifa, right? And um, it's honestly a, a ginormous test for them. I'm going back because it's... We're not talking about this anymore. I just have more information here. Um, so there's actually, um, they, it's a big test for them, right? And it makes sense. Um, and we have examples of this, like with Moses. Um, so many miracles were shown to uh, like the people, um, but only, he was only left with two, uh, with like two followers, you know, the, the splitting of the sea. Like, how are you not going to follow him and like uphold the God and worship God that he, like, that he worships? when you literally saw him part a sea. Um, so before I get into proof of uh, Rasha Khalifa being the messenger, I have to quickly explain the geometrical value um, of Arabic letters. And so put very simply, um, an Arab, every Arabic letter, uh, and this was in the time of Muhammad, so this was very, very uh, universal. It was used, like it's like as used as we say ABC in one, two, three. This is what they used, and it was universal. Um, so as you can see here, um, one, uh, I don't know what the Arabic letter is. I'm not going to try to say that. It's a line. Uh, it says one. OK. <laughs> and then as you can see, every single Arabic letter throughout the whole thing has a value to it, right? Um, one through 10, I'm assuming that's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I don't know. Um, but think about it as this. Uh, if I said A, that also means one, uh, which is essentially literally just what it is, and B, two, C, three, and then I guess Z would be like 1,000, um, and so yeah. So now I have to explain where Rasha Khalifa is mentioned in the Quran. 
Again, this is super, super like sensitive topic towards traditional Muslims. They, they can't believe this. Um, but understanding the geometrical value of something will help a lot with this. And because using the geometrical value, there's a lot within the Quran, uh, the letter, the number, the, uh, like the math and mathematical code, it's all like uh, in multiples of like 19. And geometrical value is also a way to, uh, um, like, I guess, use that. Um, so, okay. If there is a verse, so w if there's a verse within the Quran that mentions a messenger or a warner without specifying who, um, not, that's, usually taught, that's usually where uh, you can use this math and see that Rashad Khalifa's name is actually in there using the mathematical miracle. I mean, sorry, using the geometrical value. Um, again, I have links here, but I mean, I don't want to mess up. So. In the geometrical value, this, ver uh, this one, this slide, Rashad Khalifa, so get the letter R, get the A-S-H-A-D, and in Arabic, of course, not in English, and you get that, it'll equal to 505. Khalifa, do the same thing, it'll equal to 725. This is important, uh, this is gonna be always, and then the only time you're gonna add, when you wanna see like where in the verse does I mention that, you get the verse number that a warner was messaged. And let me get a verse, uh, here we go. 2.119, we have sent to you with the truth as a bearer of good news, as well as a warner. You are not answerable for those who incur hell. This verse doesn't mention Muhammad, it doesn't mention Moses, Jesus, it doesn't mention any of those. So who is it talking about? Well, when you add 505, 725, and the verse number, which I said was 119, you add those together and it equals a number that is multiple of 19. I wanted to go into the, the, uh, the calculator and I wanted to do it with you guys. Um, but if you just do it by yourself at 505, 725 and go into the Quran and look for this verse 2, 119, you add that verse number and you add these two, it'll equal up to uh, a number and you get that number and it'll be a multiple of 19. And this is throughout the whole Quran. There's always, there's a lot of, and actually let me go into that now. There's a lot of um, miracles that are within the Quran that kind of, go with uh, 19. For example, in the, um, in the Arabic word, I think Bismillah, has 19 letters. In the first verse, one one known as Bismillah consists of 19 letters. The Quran consists of 114 zura, uh, zuras, which is 19 times six, being a num multiple of 19. And um, this one, so I wanted to go, okay just because of time, I'm gonna skip to the bottom one. The Bismillah occurs 104 times despite its conspicuous as absence from Zura 9, which now I need to get into. Um, but it occurs twice in 27, which again, I'll uh, get into it. Man, time. Okay, so the two false verses, another thing that me debating with my friend was really difficult with. Uh, because when I told him that there's two false verses within the Quran, he said, no, you're taking things out, you're adding to the Quran, you can't do that, the Quran is perfect the way it is. Um, but it's actually traditional Muslims who uh, added them. Uh, I think back in Muhammad's time they were added. Um, but basically, it doesn't, with those two verses, it doesn't uh, add up to the math that is with that in, within the mathematical miracle. The Quran consists of 114 bismillahs, but with those two verses, um, it's now 113, which doesn't multiple it to 19. But God knew this. And in Zura 27, there's another Bismillah in there, the only other one, by the way, that is repeated. Now the mathematical miracle works because since it's absent in Zura 9, it's in 27, it makes sense now because 19 times six, again, 114. So then, uh, Suraj touched on this a long time ago in his sermon, but also, there are two locations in the time where Muhammad received the, uh, received the verses. And there's charts, you can look it up, times or uh, locations of each zura being revealed uh, to Muhammad. And there was two places this happened, Medina and Mecca. So we have two places where it was revealed, right? So if, this is basically how it works. If it was written in Medina, then the verse would be, the zura would be a Medinan verse. If it was written in Mecca, same thing. It would be a, a Meccan verse. Muhammad was born in Mecca, okay? So that's when he started gaining 
the Quran. That's when the Quran started coming down to him from God, right? During this, he, you know, he added, he did some, he did all that, and then he went to, he was born in Medina, thank you. He went to Medina. Now, if the verse, so you can, because he also left sometimes where Azura wasn't completed. So one half of it would be Meccan, one half of it would be Medina. But he never went back. So um, Medinan verse can't have Meccan verses because he never went back to complete uh, the Zura that would have Meccan verses. Whew, this is complicated. Okay. <laughs> Within Zura 9, it's considered a Medinan verse, which means after he moved, he started Zura 9. But there's two verses at the end of Zura 9, 128 and 129, where it's considered a Meccan verse. How is that possible if he never went back? Okay? And this is known in the traditional Muslim community. This isn't some like brand new information that, uh, that just came out. This is known. If you go and you look it up, there's actually, and I have the revelation order, the thing that actually shows, but again, I don't want to press on uh, links. Okay. <laughs> this doesn't happen anywhere else in the Quran, by the way. There's no such thing. Of a Meccan, of a Medinan verse being uh, having Meccan verses. Only a Meccan Zura can have Medinan verses because he started it here and then went over here. Okay. So I had a super cool transition, but we're on time. So mentioning Muhammad in the Salah. This is another big thing. This is a big thing when it comes to traditional Muslims. They'll always mention uh, Muhammad in, in their in their um, in their prayer. And when I was talking to my friend, um, he would always say, but you know, Muhammad is just so highly respected. Uh, he's just such a good person. We, we should strive to be like him. And I'm like, bro, you're not only, distinct, you're not, not only making distinctions between messengers, was it says in the Quran not to do that, but why aren't you mentioning Jesus? Why aren't you mentioning Moses? You're only mentioning Muhammad. And also, um, I notice this a lot. They'll say uh, when they mention Muhammad, like even if they're just talking to you, like, oh yeah, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, but when I hear my friend talk about Moses, Abraham, all these people, they just say the name and then it's just continued. So you can see the kind of high respect that they give to, Mo to Muhammad uh, for, and not to anybody else, not, not, not um, any of the other messengers or prophets. So, 2285. The messenger has believed and what was sent down to him from the Lord. And so did the believers. They believe in God, his angels, his scripture, and his message. We make no distinction among any of his messengers. They say, we hear and we obey. Forgive us, our Lord. To you is the ultimate destiny. How is mentioning one person in your prayer and saying peace be upon him when you mention him and saying that he's so amazing and not doing it to others, how is that not making a distinction between messengers? And your prayers are so important, they're only for God. Why are you mentioning another human being in a prayer that's supposed to be only for God, your creator? Also, God literally created Muhammad, and you're mentioning another one of his creations into your prayer. Uh, and um, that's not right. Okay, my conclusion. Like I said in the beginning of the sermon, when I started debating with him, um, there was a lot of new things. I, I, I got into specifics and I really started to understand why we're so different to traditional Muslims and why there's also a lot of similarities. Um, and with Christianity and atheism and Buddhism, the more you learn about these religions, the less they make sense. Jesus being God, but also the Son of God and also the Holy Spirit, how is that even possible? I don't even know what a Holy Spirit is. Like, is that Jesus or, I don't know. Even though it says in the Bible, that Jesus is not God. So in their own uh, scripture, it's saying that what they're doing is wrong. There's li this is literally happening with traditional Muslims in the Quran. Their own scripture is denying their false logic that Muhammad was illiterate, that um, you can't wear gold and silver, or males can't. Um, they all say this with absolutely no proof. And even before, just another cool thing that I realized is that even before Hadith was written, the Quran already said that it was wrong, um, which is actually kind of crazy. And you know, atheists, they think that you know, religion is a made-up story. 
and I've actually talked to people in my school, uh, atheists, and I asked them, like, hey, why do you think religion is a thing? Why don't you believe in it? And they said, oh, religion is a made-up story or a way of believing to keep people feeling safe as they fear internal nothingness when we die. Oh my goodness, he's going to be surprised. Um, <laughs> the thought of no God at all just doesn't make any sense. The universe didn't just pop into existence uh, one morning. Um, Everything is so perfect, the calculations, the amount of oxygen, the amount of gravity, the amount of sunlight, it's all so perfect um, that it can't just not be from a creator. There has to be an artist towards this. When you see an amazing painting, a painting and it looks like a photograph, you're thinking like, oh yeah, that created itself. No, there's literally a painter behind that who actually did the details and went through it. Putting this sermon together, honestly, really strengthened my faith a lot. It made me not only realize why we're different with traditional Muslims, but it made me also realize why we're not Christians, why we're not, uh, why we're not following atheism, why we're not Buddhists. And honestly, we're also blessed to have this kind of information. And um, just don't take it for granted. The next time you talk with a traditional Muslim also, which I wanted to t should have taken into account, is I should have studied first, and I should have acted like I didn't know what I was saying, and I told him to explain it, researched, seen it, and then went back. And so I kind of like did it on the spot. Um, with that, Akhma Salah, let's pray. Yeah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allah Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Maliki Yomadin. Iyak na bidu ayak na stain. Ahadina sirat al mustaqim. Sirat al adina nanta alayhim. Yar al maktubi alayhim wal dalin. Allah Akbar. Simi Allah Hu Muhammad. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar-Rabbil Alamin. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawmadin. Iyak nabidu wa iyak nasta'in. Adina sirat al-mustaqim. Sirat al-adina nanta alayhim. Gara al-maktubi alayhim wa al-dalin. Allah Akbar. Simi Allah Muhammad. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum.